Hi guys, it's been a while. Welcome to today's GIS tutorial. In today's lesson, we will learn creating analogic maps in QGIS. You can subscribe to this channel to follow all my previous useful GIS tips and tutorials. You can also join us at WasteGIS Special Solutions to learn more on GIS, remote sensing, and data collection by following this link. I'll provide all useful links in the description below. So let's get started. Hydrologic maps depict the distribution of water on the Earth's surface, characterizing the regime of water bodies and making it possible to evaluate water resources of individual land areas. Hydrologic maps include maps of river networks and their density and the lake content, runoff maps, and maps of sources that feed bodies of water, glacier, regime, water turbidity in rivers, and the mineralization and chemical composition of natural water. So in this uh, lesson, you're going to learn how to download the hydro basins, hydro rivers, and hydro lakes. I'm going to provide this link in the description below. So let's go directly into today's exercise. I'm going to open my browser. And in this case, I'm using Google Chrome, and I'm going to look for hydro sheds. And hit enter. And I'm going to uh, select the first link, which is a link to the HydroShed, which is HydroShed.org. I'm going to click on it so that I can download this kind of data. You can read more information about the kind of data that is available in this website, but I'm going to go directly into downloading the whatever we want to use in our QGIS, which is the HydroShed basin, the Hydro Rivers, and maybe Hydro Lakes. So I'm just going to go directly to the Hydro Basins tab. I'm going to select the Hydro Basins tab. And I'm going, you can actually read the information that is contained in this, but I'm going to go directly into downloading this data. And to download this data, you can see you can download this hydro basin data here. I'm going to click on here. And you'll be given a list of different kinds of data available in the different formats. So what, what I'm really interested in today is, uh, I'm interested in the uh, hydro basins. So I'm going to select hydro basins. And you can click on download selected, but let me see what happens when you select hydro basins and click download selected. It is selling its processing. And then it will give you a warning here and tell you that it's actually bigger than, uh, the, the file is actually too large that you're trying to zip, it's too, too large. The limit is 5 GB, so I'm going to now try to customize this. So I'm going to click on the drop down here. And it will be load now all the data. Now you can see there are two types of data. There's a standard data, and there's a customized data, which is uh, with legs. These are the standard data is without legs. So I'm going to select the standard data again. And then I'm going to say download selected and it's processing. And it will still tell me that the data that I'm trying to download is a bit big. So I'm going to say, okay, I know actually need, there's a limit of 5 GB. So I'm going to now decide and click on the drop down here again. And uh, you can see now there are more categories in Africa, North America, Central and South Asia, Australia and Oceania, Oceania, Europe, Greenland, and so on. So I'm interested in data in Africa. So I'm going to select Africa. And this time, I'm going to scroll back up and click on Download Selected. And now it will pop up here and you need to put in your email. So I'm going to input my email. And then I'm going to click on Submit. As soon as I click on submit, a link is sent on my email and now I can go to my email and download. So I'm going to click on go to my email address and you can see that I've actually given me uh, a link to my download. So I'm going to click on this link and I'm going to browse for where I'm going to be saving this data. So I'm going to click on browse and I'll create a folder in my work, in my JS folder and name it uh, watershed data. And I'll start the download, to start downloading my data. It, will, it is going to take some time, so I'm going to fast forward this video so that we can go to the next kind of data that you're supposed to download. Our download is complete, so I'm going to go to the other kind of data that I'm supposed to download. I'm going to go back to hydro sheds, then I'm going to go to hydro rivers, select hydro rivers, and I'm going to scroll down. And this time I'm going to 
you can see the two categories there's a geo database and then there is a shape file i'm interested in the shape file and i'm interested also in african data which is one of three mpm to click on download and um, it's going to give me a link so i'm going to click on the link that is provided i'm going to click on download again and i'll save it in the same same folder for watershed so i'm going to click on start download i will fast forward this video so that we can go to the next data which is supposed to download the download is complete so let's go to the other category that we want to download let's go close i'm going to scroll and go to the hydrolex like that so you can actually download whatever kind of data you want to use for your map or whatever analysis you want to do and then i'm going to scroll down again and you can see you can download data here again there is the leg polygons including all attributes in a shape file so i'm going to select that i'm going to click on that because i want uh, shape files so i'm going to click on that then i'm going to save in the same same watershed folder start downloading and then we start it's going to take a while so i'm going to fast forward this video Our download is complete, so let's access the folder where we have saved all our data and try to just use the data in KGIS to try and create a map. And you can see our three downloads, that is the hydro lakes, hydro rivers, and hydro sheds have been downloaded. So I'm going to unzip all this data into this folder. I'm going to uh, extract it into separate folders so our files have been extracted so let's look at how the data looks like i'm going to open the folder of the hydrolex and you can see it has the shape files for the hydrolex here i'm going to go back to the hydro rivers and i can also see we have the shape files for the hydro rivers for the whole of africa and then i'm going to go to the third folder which is for the hydro sheds. so i'm going to open this uh, folder and you can see it also has some uh, zipped files here so we can what you can do is we can actually extract them into into this location so that you can actually be able to load these data into uh, qgis so i'm going to select all and i'm going to extract we are going to extract them in that folder so i'm going to say extract the files here Now that we have all the data that we need, let's go to QGIS and look at how we can actually utilize this data to create a very nice map. So I'm going to open QGIS and I'm going to open a blank project. So I'm going to load this data. I'm going to go to layer, add layer, the vector layers. So I'm going to add vector layer. I'm going to browse for their location, then data, watershed data. And I'm going to start by adding the watersheds so i'm going to add a watershed the watershed and i'm going to add you can actually see there are level 12 levels of watersheds so i'm going to add all of them open add i'm going to close and you can actually see these are now all the watershed levels of our data so i'm going to this level one Level two, you can see how many watersheds are there. Level three, level four, level five, level six. And you can also open the attribute table to just look at the kind of information that it contains. I'm going to open the attribute table and you can see there's a sub area, up area, and distance, and there's a sub area and up area. 
just look at the other kind of level. It, it has more information, yeah, because the main basin, the next sink, the sub area, and up area of each and every polygon here. So I'm going to load another layer of a river in Kenya called River Tana. So I'm going to go to layer, add layer, add vector layer. I'm going to browse for where the layer is. It is actually data that I had in my computer. So I'm going to go to Kenya, Kenya data. And I'm going to go to Kenya rivers. And I have the river here, it's called River Tana. I'm going to load the river. Add. Close, now I'm going to move it up. So it is at the top. I'm going to change the color of the river. So I'm going to change the color and symbology of the river to blue color. I'm going to increase the size a bit to 1.6, that's okay. You can now see my river here. So I'm going to zoom in to these. And you can also already see that there are some sub, sub basins that are actually within this river. So, and it's level six, I'm going to check level five. Yeah, and you can see now, actually this river is fed by this basin. So I'm going to select this basin. So I'm going to level five, select tool. I'm going to select this basin. So this is the basin that actually, uh, this is the major basin for this uh, river. So I'm going to save this as the export save selected feature as uh, now a new shape file. I'm going to create a folder here and I'm going to say now new data. And actually going to save this as the uh, Tana, River Tana Basin. I'm saving only the selected layer, making sure the position is okay. So I have the River Tana Basin and uh, I can check now the basin, level five and also check how many sub basins are filling this uh, river and select them from this. And also save now the sub basins that are feeding this uh, river. River Tana sub basins. So can do away with the rest. Remain with the river, Tana. And then the next thing I can do is I can also add the other river networks, the drainage networks. So I'm going to go to JS data. And I can select the hydro rivers. And you can actually see there are several that are actually within these uh, uh, River Tana Basin. So I'm going to clip them using the River Tana Basin. So I'm going to go to Vector, Geoprocessing Tool Clip. And I'm going to clip the Hydro Rivers with River Tana Basin. This is the River Tana Basin. And I'm going to click save it as a to save to file. And I'm going to save it uh, 
this and I'm going to call it Hydro Rivers. River Tana Basin and Rivers. And I'm going to click on save. And I'm going to click on run. And it's executing the process and the clip is finished. I'm going to close. And uh, now I'm going to remove the yeah, rivers and all the other so that I can remain with the River Tana Basin, River Tana. Hydro rivers and the, the greater river Tana basin and the sub basin. So from these, you can actually uh, decide on what to do, or to, if you want to make a map of it, if you want to run an analysis, you can actually run analysis with the, the data. That's it for today's exercise. If you found this video useful and you want to learn more on QGIS, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to give this video a like. Otherwise, I'm happy you're here. See you in my next video.